Things do warm up tomorrow. We've got a look at your forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. San Antonio police tell us it was a matter of minutes. A man went from walking across a parking lot to lying in his own blood. They say someone stabbed him at a truck stop near Interstate 35 and Fisher Road. As Katrina Weber tells us, investigators are having as much trouble finding witnesses as they are in finding the attacker. At a truck stop that is all about love, San Antonio police say someone showed anything but love for one man. He told officers he was walking across the parking lot near Interstate 35 and Fisher Road around 6.30 this morning when another man got out of his vehicle and stabbed him. Police say the wound in his chest had him in and out of consciousness and left the 37-year-old fighting for his life. The stabbing turned the gas station parking lot into a rush hour crime scene. This can be a busy parking lot at almost any time of day, yet police say this crime went almost unnoticed. They say there were several people sleeping in their cars here, yet no one saw anything. There was one woman who police say was with the victim. They questioned her and she told them the attacker was in a white vehicle, possibly a pickup. Investigators did spend some time searching for physical evidence, but early on in the case, they say they had very little to go on. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We are learning new information about that man who was involved in an hours long standoff with Bear County Sheriff's deputies over the weekend. He told deputies he was going to die and was, quote, taking officers with him. This is 55 year old Salvador Gonzalez. He's facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon on a public servant. The standoff started around two yesterday afternoon at a home in the 2800 block of High Castle in West Bear County. An arrest affidavit states that Gonzalez was arguing with his wife and was carrying around an AR-15. BCSO says he later pointed the rifle at a deputy multiple times before hiding inside his home. After about five hours, Gonzalez surrendered. Sheriff Javier Salazar says Gonzalez is a veteran and the incident was most likely brought on by PTSD. He was taken to a hospital for mental health treatment. San Antonio police are continuing their search this morning for the person who shot and wounded a man on the city's south side late last night. Officers tell us it happened around 830 in the 1200 block of Pleasanton Road. That's near East South Cross and South Florida Street. Police say two men were working together when they started arguing, and that's when officers tell us the suspect pulled out a gun and shot the victim twice in the back. That victim was taken to a nearby hospital and is expected to recover. Meanwhile, the shooter was able to get away, but police are still looking for him. And turning to the coronavirus pandemic, all the health officials are reporting 318 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. Health officials say there is a backlog of 491 cases and 150 deaths from last December to February 10th. 447 people are still hospitalized here in Bear County. The rollout of a third vaccine in the U.S. begins today. Johnson & Johnson shipping out its newly authorized one-dose shot this morning, increasing the number of available vaccines to states this week by 26 percent. As ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports, top White House cor coronavirus advisor Dr. Anthony Fauci urging Americans to get whichever vaccine is available to them, stressing they are all proven safe and effective. There's a new ally in the fight against COVID-19. This morning, Johnson & Johnson shipping out the first batch of its coronavirus vaccine to states and pharmacies after the FDA granted the company emergency use authorization. The trucks are literally rolling off the docks as we speak, and we hope to be able to get shots in arms with literally in the next 24 to 48 hours. Unlike the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, Johnson & Johnson's only requires a single dose. The vaccine doesn't use the mRNA technology used in the other two approved shots either. Instead, it utilizes an indenovirus vector method, but the end result is similar. The body learns to recognize and launch an immune response to the coronavirus spike protein. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine can also be stored in normal refrigerators, while Pfizer and Moderna's need to be stored at below freezing temperatures. For the last 13 months, our physicians, our scientists, our engineers have been working around the clock to make this day possible. The pharmaceutical company says nearly 4 million doses are going out this week, but then none next week. White House officials tell ABC News they project 20 million doses will be out by the end of the month, but it's not clear exactly when those doses will arrive. Meanwhile, in hard hit states like Texas, it hasn't been easy getting any of the vaccines. Kendra Wright has been helping thousands, including her father, get inoculated. I felt so relieved when he got that vaccine. 
So far, the CDC says nearly 48.5 million have received at least one dose of the two-dose vaccines. Of these, more than 24 million Americans have been fully vaccinated. I'd rather go through this right here um, than to go into the hospital. Dr. Anthony Fauci urging all Americans to get whichever vaccine is available, stressing they are all safe and effective. Three really efficacious vaccines. As for who can get the Johnson & Johnson shot, it'll be based on eligibility requirements of each state. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. Every two seconds, someone in the U.S. needs blood and nearly 21 million blood products are transfused each year. This critical deed is why KSET has teamed up with its community partners for a blood drive today at the Witte Museum. Our Sarah Costa is at the Witte with how you can donate. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Well, yeah, I decided to do my part and give back to the community and donate blood with KSAC Community's Blood Drive along with University Health. And I'm here with Deborah Serna. <laughs> and Deborah, you know, this is so important because the blood supply in the community is critically low. Absolutely. We definitely depend on our donors and the kindness of their heart to come and save lives by giving blood to the patients that really need it in our hospital. Why is it critically low? Is it just a combination of pandemic and the February winter storm we had? Absolutely. So ever since the pandemic started, we've had trouble getting certain blood drives um, organized and so then definitely with the winter weather event that we had, we've had an unprecedented number of donations that we just could get. Okay, so how can people do their part? How can they come out and donate? Yeah, so they sign up to make an appointment at donatebloodtoday.com and then when they come in, they fill out the form, make sure their medical history is good, and then donate their blood. And this is going to be happening today and tomorrow. We're at the Woody Museum from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's very easy, guys. I filled out the form. If you need all this information, you can go to ksat.com. Uh, slash community and you can find all of this information and also you get some free stuff. University Health is giving out a free t-shirt, a free mask when you donate, and the Witte Museum is giving out a free pass to their new exhibit. So from the Witte, doing my part, I'm Sarah Coaster. Back to you guys. Get some goodies for donating some blood. Not bad. Like that. KSA Community is teaming up with local nonprofits to help San Antonio's recover from the aftermath of last month's winter storm. Right now on KSA.com, we have a list of city services available for people who need some aid. If you're in a position to help others, we also have a list of organizations you can donate to. You can find it all on KSATcommunity.com. Still ahead on the news at noon, how the pandemic has caused Americans to cancel their health screenings and how it's negatively impacting their health. And the Spurs opened up a back to back tonight. They could be getting some much needed help coming up in sports. The NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament is just weeks away and you have an opportunity to help the event run smoothly. After the break, RJ Marcus explains how you can get involved. A $27 million economic boost. That's what our area is expected to get from this month's NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament. And part of that push for a successful tournament will be the help of volunteers. RJ Marcus tells us how you can be part of the team. That's right, guys. The 2021 NCAA Women's Final Four and the entire tournament will be hosted this year by the San Antonio region. That, of course, is due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But we are really excited about this event taking place here in San Antonio. There's going to be 64 teams playing 63 games throughout the entire tournament at multiple locations. That includes the Alamo Dome, the Convo Center, St. Mary's Campus, Texas State, and also UT Austin. So in order for something like this, to go off as well as we have done in the past when it comes to San Antonio and Final Fours and just NCAA tournaments in general, we're gonna need a lot of volunteers. So Mary Ullman Jappet, she was with us this morning on Good Morning San Antonio at nine, and she talked about just the volunteer process. People are gonna be able to get swag bags and all sorts of different things. Here's what she had to say about signing up and the process. So they'll get a, a branded mask, something that we never have done before, but they'll also get a jersey and a jacket and a ball cap. And we'll do temperature checks, mask wearing, social distancing, all of those sorts of things. The volunteers will not actually come in direct contact with the teams. The tournament officially starts on March 21st, but teams are gonna start arriving into the Alamo City area on March 16th. So we're gonna need volunteers before that. And again, they're gonna be needed for several different 
different shifts, what you have to do is go to WFFSanAntonio.com. Again, that is WFFSanAntonio.com. That is where you can sign up and register for the 2021 NCAA Women's Tournament, which is coming to San Antonio. March Madness is coming back to the Alamo City. Back to you guys. Hoping the weather will work oh, out about man. that time. Yeah, we, we, we were on the same wavelength right there, which, you know, for me, is pretty good to be on your wavelength. Yeah. You know, that's kind of a plus. We're, 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 we're on point. On the same what about you, Justin? Good work, guys. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, we're hoping for uh, some good weather once that comes along. We're watching a couple showers on the radar. There are a few there, nothing too heavy. The aquifer down a tenth of a foot, and we do want to pass along the pollen count. Mole is in the high category, jumped up today. It's around 1,700. Mount Cedar is in the moderate category. We're going to talk more about these showers when it warms up. That forecast is coming up. Yeah, we could have used some rain today, but we kind of missed out on, on the major stuff. It's, it's not like we hadn't had anything major happen in the last month. <laughs> last so, couple of so, weeks, yeah. right? It's yeah. okay to take a little bit of a break, wow. I think. Yeah, take a little bit of a breather. It would have been nice, guys, to, to get some rain. Uh, it just didn't yeah. really materialize overnight. We didn't get the storms, the, a little bit of a cap in place. And we did get a few showers this morning, but it's just not adding up to much. And it doesn't look like we're going to get much more rainfall as showers kind of ending. One thing the moisture did do is... Uh -oh. Bump up those mold totals, 17,000, or not 17,000, thank goodness, 1,700, uh, 1,740 to be exact. 130 on the Mountain Cedar, which is moderate. I cannot believe Mountain Cedar is still around, but it is as we go into March. Let's hope it uh, starts going down. The meteorological winter is ending. We're going into meteorological spring here, so we can kind of keep records. We consider March 1st the start of meteorological spring. Now, the official start to spring is in, in mid-March. But as we look back at February, 2021 was the seventh coldest February on record with an average temperature of 49.4. I suppose that comes as no surprise considering how cold it was with that cold snap. It just shows you where we rank there. Uh, it, was, it was chilly. As we come into March, of course, we're dealing with, uh, we were dealing with a few thunderstorms earlier, which seems appropriate, right? Uh, most of those have gone away, and now we're just left with a few very, very light showers, so this is not a big deal at all. Otherwise, it's just going to be cloudy and windy today. Wind gusts within the last hour, 33 miles per hour here in San Antonio. Gusty north winds, this sticks with us through the afternoon. Gusting to 36 in New Braunfels, gusting to 20 in Uvalde. Peak wind gusts, we got it all the way up to 43 here in San Antonio earlier this morning. Gusted to 41 in Honda, 41 in New Braunfels, so these were some big time winds. Some of that uh, trash can stuff like that may have went right down the street with gusts like that. These winds are trying to calm some, but we're not seeing much of that. It's not going to take it's going to take until tonight before we see the winds really start to calm down. But we'll still see some gusts up around 30 miles per hour throughout the rest of the afternoon. Right now, cloudy skies 52 at the airport, still gusting to 33 with north northeasterly winds at 18. Temperature wise 54 New Braunfels, 55 in Castroville, 57 down there in Pleasanton, and you got 49 in Kerrville and Comfort. Temperatures are really going to hold pretty steady today. We've still got some cold air trying to work in from the north, and that's going to basically battle any sort of uh, insulation we get from the sun, what little insulation we get with the cloud cover. So temperatures are going to stay right there in the low to mid 50s, I think, throughout the afternoon. Rest of today, temperatures uh, again maybe up around 53. Northerly winds 15 to 25 miles per hour, and then we'll dip down into the 40s tonight. Satellite picture shows we are getting some clearing out west. If you're in Tel Rio, sun's trying to pop out there. It'll take a little while longer, but once it does, you'll get a little bit of a boost in temperatures. Uh, it's probably that clearing line is not going to make it uh, to San Antonio until tonight. And then tomorrow we will see some more sun as this upper level low starts to move east. You can see there's actually some snow associated with it out in West Texas. Tomorrow that does move east. The sun is out. Temperatures warm up. And then as we get into Wednesday, good weather too. Thursday, another little system tries to approach. So we get some more cloud cover. But I think we're going to miss out on rain with this one too, which is really unfortunate. We do need rain. That's, that's for sure. Looks like this is just going to bring a weak front through. So here's how the seven-day forecast looks. 30% uh, chance of showers. Really, that chance is winding down. 63 Tuesday, 70 on Wednesday, 72 Thursday. More clouds Thursday and Friday. And pretty nice weekend. Temperatures in the 60s. At least that's the way it looks right now, guys. Looks good. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Hey, we've got some breaking news about J.J. Watt coming up in just a minute. And also, the Spurs coming off a nice win Saturday night. We have some breaking news concerning fans coming back to Spurs games coming up as well. A lot of stuff happening after the break.
And we got some late breaking news from the NFL regarding former Houston Texan JJ Watt, the three time defensive player of the year, has a new home. He is headed to the Arizona Cardinals. Watt tweeting this photo less than an hour ago, showing him lifting weights in Arizona in that Arizona Cardinals shirt with the caption, Source Me. He joins former Texas teammate DeAndre Hopkins, who was traded to Arizona before the start of last season. Now the question for Texan fans is, will quarterback Deshaun Watson still be in Houston when next season starts? Good weekend for the San Antonio Spurs. DeMar DeRozan was back after he had to miss the game against the Thunder due to the death of his father. As a team, the Spurs missed four games because of COVID-19 and the team being placed in quarantine because of four positive corona tests and postponed four of their next five on the rodeo road trip when that happened. So the Spurs got DeMar back, but another change, Marcus Aldridge was able to suit up after being listed as questionable with sore right wrist and once again played off the bench for the second straight game. Zonte Murray got his defense. They had that steal first quarter. There's L.A. right there getting that bucket for you. He had 21 off the bench on Saturday night. Ah, little little fun right there. And here come the Spurs and Lonnie Walker. He had 17. The Spurs were up at halftime and were able to hate on throughout the entire game. DeMar DeRozan had a huge game Saturday night. He led the team with 32 points. Is able to finish off New Orleans Pelicans. The Spurs got the win on Saturday night. And that final was 117 to 114. Now they get ready for back. It was spectacular. Uh, to be gone that long, and not show any rust, and to be able to have the win, you know, to play as much as he did, as hard as he did. Uh, there's a lot of guys that are tough to guard on that New Orleans team. He was, he was special. Uh, he just showed that, uh, you know, he's a real professional, a uh, real vet. Uh, this is happy place uh, because what he was going through, you know, I can only imagine. Uh, you know, but I talked to him through the whole, you know, time he was gone. And, you know, just try to let him know that I'm here for him, the team's here for him. You know, we're brothers at the end of the day. So, you know, I, I'm not surprised. That's just DeMar. You know, being DeMar, he's back. This is happy place. So it was good to have him back. And what made the victory so much better is that the Spurs are still down five players when they tipped off Saturday night due to health and safety protocols. No Rudy Gay, Derek White, Kelton Johnson, De Devin Vassell, and Quandry Witherspoon. But how about some good news? Kelton Johnson listed as questionable for tonight's game, even with the Spurs have had to adapt their new lineup with a lot of new faces, especially after that loss to OKC. Um, the good thing about, you know, playing with the Spurs and having teammates, you know, we all know what we can and cannot do. Um, you know, it's still basketball at the end of the day. And, and um, we all have that love and, and, and chemistry with one another. You know, of course, it's our first time, you know, getting in the groove and some players really first time actually, I would say it's, it's been pretty good. You know, we're getting well adjusted. Um, we know what we can do and um, it's all just about keep on, we gotta keep on pushing. It's not a surprise because that's what we practice, you know, from wherever the first unit is to wherever the second unit is. So. It's all about moving the basketball, and you know, that's what he preaches a lot. So, you know, I'm not surprised. Uh, you know, we found a way, and like I said, we got a great team. Work. All right, James Harden's in town. Kevin Durant is not. He's got a hamstring injury, so he will be not be with the Brooklyn Nets tonight. And then tomorrow night, it's the New York Knicks coming to town, and then it's Oklahoma City on Thursday, and then it's the All-Star break. So three more for the Spurs before the All-Star break. And here's some good news for the fans. The Spurs announced just a few minutes ago that fans will be allowed back starting with the March 12th game against the Orlando Magic. Capacity will be limited to 3,200 fans. They'll be required to wear masks, complete a mobile health screening before arriving at the game, and all transactions for concessions will be cashless. We've got more info on our website at kset.com about the return of fans to the AT&T Center, March 12th. So that's after the All-Star game. And then off we go. That's great Cheering news. Going on. You, know, you know the players are excited to have the oh, fans. Oh, yeah. Back and the fans too. are excited yeah. to come back as well. So. 3,200 limited, but, but at least there's some bodies in the seats instead of those cardboard cutouts. Yes, that's much better. And you said this time we should not fear the beard, right? No, don't fear the beard. Okay. So. Sounds great. Go Spurs, go. <laughs> Hey, most of us are at home more because of the pandemic, and some may be missing out on important health screenings. Still ahead, how this is affecting our health in the long run. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo under fire today after another staffer accused him of sexual harassment. How the state attorney general's office is getting involved next.
New York Governor Andrew Cuomo under fire. A second staffer coming forward accusing him of sexual harassment. As ABC's Arena Roy explains, the state attorney general's office now leading an investigation into the serious allegations. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo under a rigorous investigation as calls for him to resign get louder. I know that there is a pattern of abusive and manipulative behavior from him. I do think that it is time for our governor to resign. A second former aide now publicly accusing him of sexual harassment. The governor originally said he'd named the investigator for the probe, but that was widely criticized. Instead, he's now formally referred the case to State Attorney General Letitia James, which gives her office subpoena power. That aide Charlotte Bennett telling the New York Times the governor sexually harassed her last spring. She alleges that the governor asked her direct questions about her sex life, whether or not she was monogamous in her relationships. Bennett says the governor never got physical, but he allegedly said he was open to relationships with women in their 20s. The 25-year-old tells the Times, I understood that the governor wanted to sleep with me and felt horribly uncomfortable and scared. 63-year-old Cuomo has denied the allegations, releasing a statement saying, at work, sometimes I think I'm being playful and make jokes that I think are funny. I do on occasion tease people in what I think is a good-natured way. I do it in public public and in private. The governor adding, I now understand that my interactions may have been insensitive or too personal. I acknowledge some of the things I have said have been misinterpreted as an unwanted flirtation. To the extent anyone felt that way, I am truly sorry about that. This after another former aide, Lindsay Boylan, detailed allegations of sexual harassment in an essay, including an unwanted kiss. Cuomo denied that in December. It's, uh, it's just not true. The governor's coronavirus task force is already under federal investigation for allegedly underreporting deaths in nursing homes early in the pandemic. Now, Bennett says she informed Cuomo's chief of staff about that conversation and she was transferred to another department. She left the administration altogether in November. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Overseas, a French court sentenced the country's former president, Nicolas Sarkozy, to three years in prison. The charges stem from a corruption scandal where Sarkozy promised a senior magistrate a prestigious position in Monaco in exchange for information about an inquiry against him. The judge suspended two years of Sarkozy's prison term and said he can serve the third by wearing an electronic bracelet at home. Sarkozy will go on trial again in two weeks for accusations he hid the true costs of his failed 2012 re-election campaign. He is also being investigated for accepting millions of euros in campaign funds from late Libyan leader. And NFL star Patrick Mahomes lends a helping hand to the Lone Star State. The Kansas City quarterback namesake foundation is donating 30,000 meals to a pair of events held by the East Texas Food Bank. Mahomes is a native of White House, Texas. The chief executive officer of the food bank says Mahomes is worried about how his hometown is coping with the aftermath of the winter storm that blasted through Texas a week and a half ago. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's a cool 54 degrees, but uh, not as cool as the winter storms we had. So this seems like a walk in the park. Justin. Doesn't seem too bad. It, uh, it's a little chilly out there with that gusty wind, too. Here's the good news. If you're tired of the cloud cover, you're ready to see some sun. It comes tomorrow. We're going to see sunny skies. Temperatures will warm up pretty nicely. But in the meantime, it's sort of a cool day. Cool, cloudy, somewhat damp day. 52 degrees. Right now here in San Antonio, 51 in San Angelo, most of the state in, within the same air mass here, 50s, uh, maybe a few 40s up there in uh, the Texas Panhandle. And you'll notice Brownsville, that front has not reached there. It is 78 degrees down in deep south Texas, still warm. And uh, we're going to continue to see this sort of cool, cloudy weather throughout the rest of today. We've had a few very light returns on radar. These aren't yielding much. This is a couple of sprinkles. And once... This activity you see over eastern Bear County sort of moves out. I think that's pretty much the last of it. And uh, we'll just see those cloudy skies for the remainder of today. 51 degrees, Boulevardy, 51 Canyon Lake, 51 Tarpley, 54 right now in Hondo. Forecast, it is going to be windy. That's the other big story. Gusts up to 30, 35 miles per hour into the afternoon. Temperatures stay pretty steady. And we could see a few breaks in the clouds as uh, we get into tonight and into tomorrow. We're going to talk more about uh, this warm up and what's ahead for the rest of the week coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. With more of us staying at home during the pandemic, some of us might be skipping out on important health screenings. ABC's Ike Ajachi explains how this can impact your health. 
wear a mask, socially distance, and stay home. These are all important preventative measures that Americans have been embracing to help prevent the spread of COVID-19 this past year. Besides staying away from theaters, bars, and malls, new research suggests Americans were also staying away from one very important place, their doctor's office, this causing delays in important cancer screenings. Researchers from Diana Farber Cancer Institute and Brigham and Women's Hospital study the number of screenings performed for lung, breast, cervical, colon, and prostate cancers. They compared these screening numbers before and during the pandemic and found a 60 to 82 percent decrease in cancer screenings during the first three months of the COVID-19 pandemic. They also found a decrease in cancer diagnoses that ranged between 19 and 78 percent, depending on the type of cancer diagnosed. The decrease in cancer diagnoses comes not because there was less cancer, but most likely because people weren't going in to get tested. Fortunately, after the first three months of the pandemic, people started returning to their clinics for screening tests, with cancer screening rates now almost back to pre-pandemic levels. The research provides us with an important reminder. Stay home when we can, but do go into the clinic for important cancer screening tests when needed. With this Medical Minute, I'm Micah Giacci. Inspired by current events, a Welsh rock band recorded a new album start to finish in less than two months. The sneak peek of The Alarm's new album still ahead. Plus more details on a new device that can help with traumatic brain injuries. How the FDA says it helps protect athletes' brains next. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Everyone, this is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. A judge has ruled Facebook will have to pay $650 million to their users. This is part of a class action privacy settlement filed back in 2015. The suit claimed that Facebook's tag suggestions tool stored biometric data without users' consent and that allegedly violated the Illinois Biometric Information Privacy Act. The settlement now orders the 1.6 million members of the class suit who submitted those claims to be paid as expeditiously as possible. Meanwhile, United Airlines making it a lot easier now to hit the slopes. The airline now offering direct bus service from Denver International Airport to popular ski towns in Colorado. Starting April 1st, passengers be able to take a shuttle from the airport to Breckenridge and Fort Collins. The service will transfer passengers checked bags and their skis and they'll put them directly on the bus. And move over Chicken Wars, Arby's has some bigger fish to fry. The fast food chain announcing a test run of their crispy fish sandwich that is available until the end of March. This comes as Arby's seeks to get more creative as the chicken Wars heat up. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. More consumer news. The FDA has authorized a new device that could help reduce the risk of traumatic brain injuries in sports like football. The Q collar is a C-shaped is a C-shaped device that fits around the back and the side of the neck. It works by clamping down on blood vessels in the neck, which increase blood volume in the skull. This limits the movement of the brain inside the skull and helps to protect an athlete's brain from the effects of repetitive head impacts. A new luxury car service is becoming more popular. Black Lane, an upscale car service that has focused on trips to airports, is now expanding to offer rides around New York City. The company is putting up some competition for Uber and Lyft in New York. Black Lane plans to launch in several more cities around the world in the next few weeks. Outside with a live cam. Is it going to rain or not? Come on. <laughs> No, nope. here. Not the rest of today, David. I'm sorry Done. to say we only picked up a trace at the airport. That that was it. Uh, 62 was the high. That actually happened right after midnight, and 52 is the low. That's about where we are right now. Uh, that's because that cooler air continues to work in. Averages are 70 and 47. The records are 89 and 21. Set way back in 1899 and 1890. 1899, interesting year. That was a, a year where we had a big cold outbreak, and then that got up to 89. Go figure. Gotta love Texas weather, right? We're gonna have some warmer temperatures on the way. We'll talk more about that coming up.
If you're tired of the humidity over the weekend, now we get a little break. It was like stiff. That was one of those go out there and lean up against it. Not worry about falling over humidity days. <laughs> it was sticky. What was that yeah, about? It was. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, we're getting into that time of year where we're going to start seeing kind of those big swings where it gets nice and warm and humid and maybe we get a few thunderstorms and cold fronts come through. As long as we get cold fronts, we'll have some chances for rain. It just uh, didn't really materialize for us this morning as we had hoped uh, for some showers and storms. You look at the time lapse here. It's basically just been all clouds. Only a trace of rain officially at the airport and the temperatures right now 52 degrees. Dew point is at 41 north northeasterly winds at about 18 miles per hour. Winds are gusty still after gusting uh, over 40 miles per hour a little bit earlier this morning. Here's a look at the radar. We still have some light returns out there, but nothing that's uh, going to cause any issues. This is all really light. Moving out to the uh, north and east, most uh, rain, if we're going to see any, any sprinkles have passed through San Antonio at this point. Now, we did get some thunderstorms this morning. They just weren't here in town. We saw a nice thunderstorm work from basically Medina Lake up into the Bernie area, and radar estimates show that it maybe up to an inch there with that uh, particular storm as it moved up towards the Austin area. Same around Curvo and Fredericksburg. We just missed out by and large here in San Antonio, which is unfortunate because we definitely do need the rain. There's a look at the wind gusts, gusting to 33 right now, gusting to 36 in New Braunfels, 30 in Hondo, 28 in Laredo. So it's a windy day area wide. Those gusts were even stronger this morning may have woken you up with gusts up to 43 miles per hour here in town. Gusted to 41 in New Braunfels and Hondo. Gusted to 38 in Rock Springs. Temperature wise, 57 Pleasanton, 57 in Catula, 46 Rock Springs, 51 Curvo, 50 in Fredericksburg. It's a chilly day. Temperatures aren't going to change all that much. Uh, with cloudy skies, we'll keep it in the, the low to mid 50s for the most part, dropping down into the 40s tonight. Clouds will slowly clear overnight, and I think we will get Quite a bit of sun tomorrow. The visible satellite picture shows that we're already starting to get a little bit of clearing, at least out near Del Rio, maybe Rock Springs. You're probably still in the clouds right now, but that clearing line is not far away. And again, tonight we'll start to see some of these clouds clear west to east. There's also some rain and snow back out across West Texas. Cold enough for that, although a lot of it's starting to turn to rain at this point. And that's associated with an upper level low, which is spinning out uh, to our west. 38 right now, Midland 47 in Lubbock, 51 Wichita Falls, and we'll zoom out some pretty cold stuff up around uh, Minneapolis. It's 19 there, 4 in International Falls, which is typically always the cold spot. If you want to find some warmth, and it feels like it's been that way all winter long, you got to go to Florida. 83 right now in Miami and 86 in Orlando. Here's our uh, forecast for today. We'll see, again, clearing skies tonight, tomorrow, mostly sunny. I think that'll be the case Wednesday too. More clouds though on Thursday and another storm system drops in. Uh, this kind of takes a right hand turn down into Texas, but we still miss out on a lot of the rain. So we're going to keep rain out of the forecast for now. Showers ending today. Windy winds should die down some tonight and more so tomorrow. 63 on your Tuesday, mostly sunny. 70 Wednesday, although I'll point out that we start off at 39 Wednesday morning. 72 mostly cloudy on Thursday, mostly cloudy on Friday. Yeah, there is a frontal boundary, but it doesn't cool us down a whole lot. We'll still be in the 60s both Saturday and Sunday, guys. No complaints for me, Justin. Thanks. And the popular 80s rock band The Alarm made a complete album in less than two months. How the performers were able to make it happen, coming up. And the Golden Globes honored the mantra, the show must go on last night. The top moments from the distanced extravaganza. Coming up next in the spotlight. In your spotlight news, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association held its annual star-studded Golden Globe Awards Sunday night. It was an evening of celebration amid some controversy. ABC's George Pinocchio explains. The Hollywood Foreign Press Association is made up of around 90 international no-black journalists. Thank you to the all-white Hollywood Foreign Press. Early in the show, Hollywood Foreign Press members addressed the controversy, saying black representation is vital. And beyond that... We must also ensure everyone from all underrepresented communities gets a seat at our table. And we are going to make that happen. Jodie Foster, who won the Best Supporting Actress Award for The Mauritanian, thinks this was a good first step. It sounds like the HFDA is, uh, you know, open to, to change. 
and that's exciting. Controversy aside, this is always an unpredictable award show. In this pandemic, winner Jason Sudeikis wore a hoodie promoting his sister's dance studio. On the other end of the scale, Best Actress in a Comedy winner, Rosamund Pike. You've got to express what it feels like, you know, to be all dressed up with nowhere to go. And this dress just felt like... Whatever happened, I would have fun. In the musical or comedy categories, Borat's subsequent movie film won the Best Motion Picture Prize and Best Actor for Sasha Baron Cohen. Donald Trump is contesting the result. On the drama side, Nomadland won Globes for Best Motion Picture Drama and Best Director, both awards for Chloe Zhao. If this means more people like me get to live their dreams and get to do what I do, I'm happy. Drama's top acting prizes went to Andra Day for the United States versus Billie Holiday. It was her first lead role, certainly not her last. I'd love to just work with great writers and producers and directors to get some of these, more of these stories of just people of color, women's stories, marginalized people off the ground. The late Chadwick Boseman won for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. His widow accepted on his behalf. He would thank God. He would thank his parents. He would thank his ancestors for their guidance and their sacrifices. And in the television categories, The Crown made the biggest impact, winning four Globes, including Best Drama Series. In Los Angeles, George Pinocchio for ABC News. Pop star Taylor Swift calling off concerts that were postponed due to the pandemic. Last April, Swift canceled all live appearances and performances for the rest of the year in what she said was an effort to prevent the spread of COVID-19. On social media, Swift apologized to fans, saying that she's disappointed to have to cancel the postponed Lover Fest shows because of the pandemic. Despite not being able to see fans live, Swift surprised them earlier in the month by announcing she will be releasing a re-recording of one of her first albums, Fearless. That'll happen on April 9th. The Welsh rock band The Alarm has released a new album inspired by current events and recorded it in less than two months. CNN's Rick Damagella has more. That's Protect and Survive, the first song on The Alarm's new album, War, an album conceived, recorded, and released in just seven weeks. We started writing the record straight after I'd witnessed the news programs about the Capitol building being occupied, and I just felt compelled to respond to the situation, the pandemic, everything. It just felt like it was starting to become overwhelming. I felt we were in an era where we could use our own technology to produce that fast response and, and write something that captured the zeitgeist in a way that John Lennon did with Instant Karma when he said he wrote it for breakfast recorded it for lunch and released it for dinner. And he did that in 10 days for one song. And we've done a whole album in 50 days from start to finish. Crush. So that's a turnaround, isn't it? Yeah. I think when Mike came up with the idea, I, I was probably a little taken aback because we're, we're quite busy anyway. I didn't realise we were going to kick off 2021 with a full album that had to be delivered in 50 days. But um, <laughs> I... It's very exciting being married to Mike. So when he came up with this idea, you know, my job is always to support his over ambitious ideas. And as soon as I'd recovered from, from the shock of what, what he was trying to do, I just thought, right, I'm in this 110%. This in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. I wouldn't be surprised if Mike and Fiona were actually members of an 80s rock band. <laughs> I'm sure they have that in their resume somewhere. How's it going, guys? <laughs> what, what would be the name of that rock band? I don't know. We'll have to think about that one. Yeah. Hey, one thing we're rocking is burgers today. Ooh, yes, indeed. It's and I all love this for burger official week. burger patty right there. And we are talking about the best burgers from Buns. And Jeff Edwin Salazar is here. What's the secret to the perfect burger? Well, first of all, good afternoon, good morning. Uh, the secret for the best burger, I think, is uh, it starts with the toasting of the bread. It has to be a great toast, so it will prevent the moisture to go inside the bread and become a soggy burger. Yeah, you don't want it soggy, exactly. right? Exactly. Okay. Then, and 
fresh ingredients too, right? Yes, all the time. We always make our own bread every morning, we ground our own meat every time, and we make even mayonnaise in the restaurant, so everything is fresh every day. All right. We are uh, talking Burger Week this week. Yes. And our Jen Tobias Trusky is with Fisher and Weezer, and she's got a two ingredient dinner that you can make at home. Yep, hey, speaking of making at home, remember Play-Doh as a kid? All right, uh, there is a local woman who has made her own Play-Doh and these kids so much fun. We're gonna try it out, it's a blast. <laughs> yes, and hey, how about upgrading your style without breaking the bank? Yesena Davila has some great fashion tips for you. All right, you got the end of the bottom of the jar of peanut butter. We got a great trick on how to get that out of there. Instead of digging down in there and getting the knife all messy and everything like that, Plus the question is, you know, of course, peanut butter and jelly. What's the weirdest thing you've ever had peanut butter with? Uh, something outside of the box. Let us know yes. at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll see some of those ideas later on. All right, all right.